In the late 1700s, Britain's prisons were getting too full and they desperately needed a new strategy to punish their people. Crime had become more and more rampant during the Industrial Revolution period where underpaid and exploited workers and many unemployed people resorted to criminal activity in order to live. Crimes such as pickpocketing, stealing an apple or a loaf of bread were growing fast in industrialised Britain. Too many criminals and no room for them meant that the British needed to find places to dump their convicts. This was a pressing issue, especially because of their recent loss to the Americans in the American Revolution, where Britain lost one of their main penal colonies. Captain Cook discovered the east coast of Australia in the early 1770s. He and his crew were impressed with the area and they claimed it under the old European law of terra nullius, meaning land belonging to no one. Dutch men had seen the west and the north part of the land and named it New Holland centuries before, but they'd never claimed the land for themselves. The British called the eastern coast of New Holland New South Wales. Australia was still referred to as New Holland until the later 1800s. On January 26, 1788, Britain's first fleet arrived in New South Wales. Eleven ships of convicts, officials and their families, along with livestock such as pigs, sheep, cattle and rabbits, came to start a new colony, a penal colony. 222 women and 767 men meant a huge gender imbalance, which was evident in Australian colonies for years to come. The journey took 250 days and nearly 100 travellers died aboard the ship due to the terrible conditions. The Indigenous people of Australia and the new Europeans who were arriving more and more clashed. White Europeans did not understand the culture of the Aboriginals and they often dismissed them as being barbarous, uncivilised savages in need of an education. This racism and the lack of tolerance became more and more evident in years to come. The British were powerful and had more modern technology. The Aboriginal peoples hardly had a chance against them. While at times the exchange between the two cultures was not always vicious, many have come to believe that Australia Day, the day when the First Fleet arrived on 26th of January, should be known as Invasion Day, as a day that symbolises imperialism at its worst. At first, the conditions were hard for European settlers. The land was not like the land back home, where the conditions were considerably hotter and growing crops was really hard work. Convicts helped establish the first towns in Australia. Over the next few years, as convicts worked off their debt, more and more freemen came to settle and the nation grew. One convict who worked especially hard, Mary Riby, paid off her debt and became a successful businesswoman in early Australia. Her face is on the Australian $20 note today. Many freemen from Europe and all over the world migrated to Australia to start a new life and for new business opportunities in a growing, flourishing new society. Australia is known today as a place built on the hard work of the convicts. By 1840, no more convicts were sent to eastern parts of Australia, as more and more freemen opposed it. Overall, 160,000 convicts had come via boat to the nation. As freemen, they were becoming entrepreneurs, business owners, and making a life for themselves in this new land. In the 1850s, gold was found in Victoria and the gold rush begun. This grew Australia very rapidly. The population exploded as people from all over the world heard of the newfound goldfields and came to find their fortune. Areas of the goldfields such as Clunes, Ballarat, Bendigo and Castlemaine saw many canvas tent cities grow rapidly as housing and accommodation could not keep up with the demands of the gold diggers. Over the years, Australians grew more and more democratic and fought the authority for more rights. The Eureka Stockade is considered an important event in Australian political history as it marks a time when the gold diggers stood up for their own rights against the governing authority. In 1901, Australia became a united nation. Before this, Australia was divided into six separate colonies. WA nearly did not become part of the new Australia and New Zealand was considered for being a part of the Federation. In 1911, the Northern Territory and Australian Capital Territories were established. Canberra became the official capital of Australia in 1913, chosen because there was much debate between Melbourne and Sydney as being the capitals. Canberra was established right between both of them.